It's been said that New Jersey has an affordable housing crisis. One organization trying to change that is New Jersey Community Capital, also known as NJCC. It's the largest community development financial institution in the state. NJCC's mission is to revitalize neighborhoods and make communities more equitable and inclusive. One way that's done is by providing financing to developers, encouraging them to build affordable housing across the state. I got a progress report from NJCC's president and CEO, Brunel Hall. Brunel, it's great to talk to you on NJ Business Beat today. Great to be here, Rhonda. Thanks for having me. As this year comes to a close and we look ahead to next year, how would you describe some of the struggles we see in communities to provide affordable housing here in New Jersey? There are also some intrinsic issues here in New Jersey because of its uh, ideal location. It's very expensive, not only to rent here, but also to build here as well. So, uh, you know, it takes a lot of effort to provide affordable housing. And at this time, even with our best efforts, uh, there's roughly a 200 unit shortage in affordable housing in a state where 36% of its residents rent. So you focus in part on the lending efforts. Tell me about your efforts to provide some help to make a difference in these communities. New Jersey Community Capital is a 35-year-old community development financial institution based here in New Brunswick. Uh, we really focus on lending to real estate developers that provide low and moderate income housing throughout the state of New Jersey. Uh, over the past year, we committed $47 million in 68 loans throughout the state of New Jersey to really uh, ex uh, extenuate and, and, and really focus on providing more low-income housing in the state. What are some of the success or success stories you had this past year? Most recently, uh, we provided $9 million in new market tax credit to a $300 million transit-oriented development in East Orange, the Brick Church Station to be exact. Uh, and that's going to be a combination of uh, affordable housing, retail, and entertainment in a, in a location that is near a train station, but has gone many decades without having that type of spark. Uh, our ideal there is that people in lower to modern income communities deserve a 24 seven location where they can live, work and play in the same area in which uh, they grew up. Do you find that developers really do want to make a difference? They want to put affordable housing in place, but for them, it's really just the cost equation that they can't afford to do it without some help. There are a lot of factors that go into building affordable housing, not to, to mention the rising construction costs associated with inflation, but also really just the cost to maintain affordable housing, which tends to have higher maintenance costs than uh, traditional housing. And developers obviously develop to a profit. So at times, you know, you have a... Uh, a situation where profits run uh, in the face of uh, just good and best efforts for social impact. And in those cases, people like uh, place, I'm sorry, organizations like New Jersey Community Capital had to provide low income, I'm sorry, low cost financing to developers and also with the government so that we can subsidize the development of affordable housing throughout the communities that need it the most. And maybe we should clarify for people who are not aware, when we say affordable housing, this is not what it was back in the day, decades ago. I mean, these are nice units that look great in a community and really weave into the fabric of a community. Yes, no, you're exactly right. I mean, since the 80s, most large metro areas have uh, moved away from traditional uh, public housing, although it's obviously very needed, uh, where you concentrated a lot of low-income residents. Uh, you see more garden-style, uh, affordable, and mixed-income housing where people of various incomes uh, live and work together so that there's just no difference, right? You're not creating a uh, impoverished area where the quality of life is questionable. You're creating an area where people of low income, people with higher incomes work, uh, live and play together and really create community. Brunel, are we going to come closer to solving New Jersey's affordable housing crisis in 2023? We have a lot of good partners, the state of New Jersey, uh, other nonprofits, as well as our financial institution partners. But there is a 200 unit affordable housing shortage in New Jersey. Uh, that's the metric that gets us all up in the morning. That's the metric we're trying to bring down. Uh, we think that we can. Uh, will it be eliminated? No, but we believe that 
uh, with our best efforts and a lot of innovation, we'll be able to bring that number down uh, significantly over the next 12 to 18 months. Thanks for your help at getting that done. And it was good to talk to you. It's a pleasure speaking to you as well. Thanks for watching. For more clips and episodes of NJ Business Beat, subscribe to the NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel.